Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hype Pop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we have, in my opinion, what is one of the best flash strobes at this price point from Godox, the Godox MS300V. So here it is, one of the best bang for buck flash strobes on the market in my opinion. It's the Godox MS300V. Now this is a 300 watt flash strobe and it's a studio strobe, so it's AC mains powered only. Um, but it's definitely one of the best at this price point. So if you're looking for a starter flash, um, one that will cover most studio spaces, so this is a 300 watt unit. And if you have a couple of these, you definitely have more than enough light to sort of get you by for most work in studios such as portraiture, product photography, family, that sort of stuff, this is the light to look at. So let's take a closer look at what's included. Firstly, you can see the box here is the new white Godox packaging. And on the inside, once again, with all this new Godox packaging, it shows you what's included with the flash. In this case, the light body. It also has um, a protective cover for the Bowen's head there, or the flash. You've got the power cable, as well as an instruction guide. There's that instruction guide, and there's that flash cable, power cable, and you have the flash unit itself. So I've got with me the MS300V, and for those of you that are familiar, this is a model from Godox that they have had previously. However, this is the newer version, the V model. And they've been doing this, uh, the upgraded V versions for the majority of their flash range, starting with the DP range, the SK range, and also now the uh, MS range here that we have. Now to run through some of the specs really quickly, firstly, this version here is the MS300, which means it's 300 watt seconds in terms of its output power. There is a 200 watt version, which is the MS200V. So if you needed a light that uh, with a little less power or just something that's a little cheaper, you can look at that 200 watt second version. In terms of its flash duration, its flash duration is one over 2,000th of a second to one over 800th of a second. It has a guide number of 58 meters at ISO 100. It also has a color temperature reading of 5800 Kelvin plus or minus 200 Kelvin. And the new thing about this V version here is the modeling lamp. So this particular V version has a modeling lamp which is now LED. So that's nice and convenient as we've seen this on previous versions like the SK V series as well as the DP V series. Um, you, you can see now that there is an LED modeling lamp and that modeling lamp is rated at 10 watts. Um, so here you can see as I've removed the Bowen's cap protector as well this as this little foam packaging here that protects the flash tube of the light itself um, There's a little modeling lamp at the center here and this modeling lamp here is a COB LED So that's chip on board LED. It's also round in shape um, So that's seen in most new COB LED lights just pure continuous lights So it's good to see this new addition in flash strobes such as the MS300 and in most cases, this is one of the lower models in Godox's range. And I mean, it's a lower model because the recycle time is rated at 0.1 second to 1.8 seconds, which is not bad actually. Um, that's at full output. So at 300 watts, you, you've got a recycle time of 1.8 seconds. Um, they usually don't update with the latest versions. Um, to have features that, that you can see in the, you know, the mid-range or the high-end versions from Godox. So it's good to see that they are upgrading even some of their lower models too. Now you can see this does have a Bowen's S mount, so that opens you up to a bunch of different lighting modifiers. Um, so if you want to take a closer look at a video we've done previously, we've actually reviewed and compared some softboxes by Godox, as well as different types of lighting modifiers. So if you wanted to take a closer look at that one, click the link up above. Now in terms of the light itself, um, it does have an inbuilt receiver, uh, which is what we've traditionally seen with all of the newer model Godox lights, as well as all their portable range, such as the 8200 Pro, 400 Pro. It has the inbuilt X receiver. 
So that means you're able to trigger this flash with only the trigger. Um, and the triggers, we've also compared those triggers which include the X1, the X2, and the X Pro. And now the newer X Pro Mark II. And if you wanted to take a closer look at our review from the past, take, uh, click the link up above. Um, but that will, all you need to do is just automatically, will sort of dial in your channel and group and that will automatically talk to the flash here as long as um, those settings are matching and you're you know, off, off to the races in terms of shooting. So now having a quick look at um, the flash here itself, you can see the actual design of the flash is quite similar to previous models. However, um, it's still maintaining that compact design. It has things such as that handle there that allows you to control the tilt. Um, so if you want to tilt the, the light just like that. You also have the upgraded version of the umbrella bracket here. So there's an umbrella mount um, that also has a tightening screw here. Um, but it has a little clip on the inside that sort of holds it with tension, which is a nice feature because some others kind of just slip in and out. Um, but the tension pin there allows you to sort of have a bit more friction as you're feeding the umbrella rod through and out. And on the back here, you can see it's a mains powered light and going through some of the buttons really quickly. Firstly, you have the group channel button, the S1, S2, the audio beep button, there's a modeling lamp, the test fire button on off. You also have a sync port that allows you to connect up third party triggers or like a manual trigger. And that's a 3.5 mil. And you also have a USB type A, but you can see there, there's a little wireless symbol above the USB type A. And what that means is that it's actually compatible with Godox's older flash trigger system, which is the FT16 or the XT16. So Godox's legacy trigger system. And lastly, of course, you have the dial here that also acts as a button that when you press it down. Now let's turn on this flash and have a quick look at some of the features. Now I've got the flash all plugged in here. So I've just plugged in the mains power here and I switched it on via this button here. And you can see there's the LCD display here that goes through um, some of the different settings. So firstly is the wireless mode. And you can see it has the channel that you need to dial into and then also it lists out the group in this large lettering system here. So currently on group A and channel one. It also has the dip switch dial indicator there too, which is convenient if you're using some of those older um, triggers that have those dip switches. Um, so when you actually press down on the group button, it cycles through the group. And then if you hold the group slash channel button, it highlights the channel and you can change the channel too. And you can see it actually changes the dip switches also um, as you're going through the different channels. You can press down to lock that in. S1, S2 is used if you'll be using the optical slave um, for this particular flash. So what you'll notice is there's an infrared bar here at the top of the flash, and that allows you to trigger this flash as a slave, either a slave one or a slave two, or you can switch that off. And that means that if you have a, a few flashes, you'd have one acting as a master that connects directly into um, the, the camera. So the trigger system that's sitting on top of your camera. And then from there, you can set this as a slave to that master flash. And then from there, you're able to um, fire off optically uh, rather than having to use a trigger system. However, if you are using Godox's trigger system, you won't need to worry about that whatsoever because as mentioned previously, you do have the inbuilt receiver and you'll be able to talk to the, the flash, um, all the flashes that you have configured as long as they're Godox in your setup, which is more convenient because that means you can change the settings of each flash individually and control the flashes a lot better rather than relying on the optical um, slave there. Now the next button here is the um, beep button or the speaker button. And you can see as I turn this off, the indicator goes away. And as you press that, there's a little beep. So every time you fire the flash, when it recycles, it'll beep. And usually that's used as a, a good prompt for say a model um, to change their pose, or you can you know, prompt your, your subject to change pose as they hear that beep, uh, which is convenient. So in most cases, you'd have that on. Uh, and then you have the modeling lamp here, which is the next button, and that changes from proportionate there. So with proportionate, as you increase the output power of the flash, the actual tube, the modeling lamp, will also decrease. So it's proportionate to the output level of the flash. 
And if it's set down at 100%, you can hold down on the modeling light button to make sure that's turned on. And then from there, press down on the set button and you can control the intensity of that modeling lamp. So from 5%, up 5% up increments all the way up to 100%. And then you can press that once again, the modeling lamp icon will go away and you can see the modeling light is now off. You obviously have the test button. And when it's flashing like that, that means it needs to recycle. So usually you would press that to make sure that the flash itself is recycled. And of course, you've got the dial here at the top. So you can go up, so it's from one over 32 output all the way up to one over one output. And you can see you can go down in 0.1 stop increments also. So you have a lot of fine tuning available with this light, considering it is an entry model flash from Godox. You do have that COB LED light, which is a great addition. I um, mean, you have everything that you kind of need in a studio flash, especially if you're just starting out. And at this price point, I think it really can't be beaten. Another thing to take note of, especially um, if you are using mains power, perhaps um, this is rated at 110 volt all the way up to 240 volt. So depending on your location and the, the different AC mains power at your, available in your country, um, you may have issues with the fuse. And the fuse here is just situated uh, just above the port here where we have to plug in the AC. And what you can do is you just grab a tool. In this case, I have a little bottle opener here that I can pry this open with. And that pries open the compartment with the fuse. Now, this fuse compartment here houses the actual fuse that's in use, as well as a spare fuse on the inside here. And this says that it's used only with 250 volt fuse, and there's a little um, etched in you know, sort of instruction thing there. So um, that's just a good thing to take note of. And then apart from that, you can see it actually has some of the specs here at the top. So this is AC 200 to 240 volt for this particular model. There are 110 volt ones available for the US market and for other markets that suit that um, voltage range. It's also 50 to 60 Hertz and the fuse is a five amp fuse, 250 volt. So I wanted to go ahead and test the COB LED lamp, the modeling lamp here on the MS300V because now that there are all these improvements uh, with modeling lights on flash strobes, it's good to know the quality of these LEDs um, and seeing if you, you can actually use this as a continuous light. Now we have done this previously on models such as the SKV and also the DP V series, which do have upgraded COB LED modeling lamps. However, I wanted to test the MS300V, test its light quality as well as its output. I have it about uh, one and a half arms length away from me, so roughly about a meter, meter and uh, you know 1.2 meters away from me. And I do have the C800 uh, light meter here, and I'm able to determine um, the CRI reading as well as the lux reading for a 10 watt light, such as the modeling lamp is from this light. So firstly, I will just go ahead and turn off my key light here, um, so it's not really affecting the output and the lux reading. So one second. So I've turned off our large key light here, which is a 300 watt LED, and I've now substituted it only with the 10 watt LED here from the front, of course, um, as my key light without a reflector. So this is the MS300V modeling lamp without the reflector. And I'm just going to test the CCT rating firstly. So it's coming up here, which I just put it on screen as about 5,873 Kelvin. So that is sort of in the daylight, more in the higher range of the daylight spectrum there. And I am getting a lux reading of 1580 lux um, for this particular light. So that's not bad considering it's only a 10 watt LED. Now in terms of the CRI, I'm getting a pretty high reading here for the CRI. So you can see it's actually a 95 0.6 CRI, so almost at that 96 range, which is impressive considering it's supposed to just be a modeling lamp. Um, so it does mean that it's a pretty accurate um, source of light coming from that 10 watt LED. Okay, just a quick little test here. So you can see I've actually now turned off all the lights in the studio apart from the 10 watt modeling lamp from the MS300V and you can see the sort of light output it does produce in an isolated environment like this. So there's no other lights. Um, in this space. 
and it is quite a dim light if you're using it as your main light, but you can definitely get away with it um, if you're using it in a low light environment such as this, and if you're wanting to take sort of some um, shots that perhaps product photography or, um, but you can see it does cast a bit of a shadow depending on if you are using some sort of lighting modifier. So you wouldn't really be using it as um, a light source. Um, for most things, you'd definitely be looking at a proper continuous light if you needed it for um, something you know that's quite large or a scene that's quite large or a subject that's quite large. However, it is good in terms of a light source being accurate and also still functional at the same time as a modeling lamp. So that was just our unboxing and review of the Godox MS300V 300 watt flash strobe by Godox. In my opinion, definitely one of the best value for money flash strobes by Godox and if not the market as a whole. It's perfect for those that are looking for a starting flash strobe setup uh, with still all the features that you need from a flash strobe. Also being 300 watts, it's got the LED modeling lamp. Um, it suits people who are just starting out. We've had people purchase these flash strobes for uh, photo booth setups, for weddings and events. Uh, also for dentistry or medical purposes, for taking before and after shots. There's so many different purposes that you would use a flash strobe just like this, including product photography. So I reckon that it's definitely a perfect starting strobe to set up for your flash lighting kit. So for more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts or if you have any questions about the MS300V. Follow us on socials, the links are down below and visit our website, highpop.com.au. Thanks for watching.